Hello and welcome. I am Zabraxi, and I just want to say I used to love cutscenes back in the day. Games like Ocarina of Time, Legend of Dragoon, Final Fantasy VII, some of these have had some amazing cutscene moments. But I'm not gonna lie, I've grown to really hate them lately. Video games are an interactive medium that has been constantly growing at a rapid pace, just as the technology it's a part of has grown. Along the way, it seems that cutscenes decided to become more and more prevalent as technology allowed creators to make better and better looking cinematic moments. But the question arises, have we gone too far? I think we go even deeper and ask, do cutscenes even have a place in video games at all? Now keep in mind, there are some major spoilers for some of these following games, so if you don't want them ruined, feel free to go. I'm not going to be offended in any way. As I said previously, video games are an interactive art form, so is it safe to say that anything that prevents interactivity is a bad thing? Well, in fact, this is a pretty common foundation for game design. The idea is that anything that takes control away from the player should be avoided. The only time a player should ever lose control over their avatar is if the lack of control can actually become a gameplay mechanic in and of itself. Nowhere is this done better than Super Metroid. At the end of the game, you are finally confronting Mother Brain. The baby Metroid that has grown attached to you steps into the encounter to intervene and save Samus. However, the lack of control you experience preventing you from assisting the Metroid is perfect. You're forced to watch it die trying to protect you. Now this is by every definition a cutscene, so why am I okay with this one and not so many others? Well, let's take a look at another cutscene that I think just misses the mark of really invoking that feeling of helplessness and despair. The Last of Us opens with a brilliant premise, and honestly, I think the atmosphere the game is trying to convey is done really dang well. In the beginning of the game, Joel and his daughter Sarah get separated from a character Tommy, and they're forced to run away from the infected until they bump into a soldier. The soldier is given an order to shoot them despite their pleas for help. The game has you play running into the soldier, but it's quickly switched over to a cutscene where instead you watch everything play out. Is the scene still good? Well, it's okay. This could have been so much more engaging and emotional if I had control during this entire moment. What if? What if the soldier asked me to stop, and if I moved, he'd shoot me? What if I'm forced to stand there holding my daughter, waiting to hear that he still has to kill us, regardless of the fact that we're still just desperately trying to run away from the infected, which gives me, the player, the chance to attempt to run away, only to still get shot and Sarah dies because I couldn't save her. You see how much more devastating that scene would be if I had control? So. Again, why does the lack of control work in Super Metroid and not in The Last of Us? Well, I think it all boils down mainly to two things. The first is that you have to go through the cutscene without a cut or transition. It all has to happen within the game. And second, that loss of control has to be rare. Not that rare. You see, in Super Metroid, you very rarely lose control of Samus. The only times you aren't in direct control over what's going on is when you get an upgrade and you get that awesome music. In The Last of Us though, cutscenes happen so often that the loss of control isn't interesting. It's just accepted and expected, and because of that, kind of dull. The end of Halo Reach is a prime example of tragedy done perfectly in a video game. You're just thrown into the level like normal with a single objective, survive. You are going to die here, and there is nothing you can do about it, but the game lets you fight and lets you try to hold on. It lets you try to hide to regenerate your health. It lets you try to apply all sorts of strategies in the hopes that you'll succeed. Most importantly, it's you who dies. Not just the character you're playing, but you. It wasn't the game that killed you. You lost the battle, and you didn't make it. You failed the objective. You didn't survive. Now this doesn't just have to apply to moments of loss and sadness. It can apply to all types of emotions, to happiness and joy. Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that cutscenes just don't have a place in video games. Well, I wouldn't go quite that far. In fact, there are times I think cutscenes and games do work. To look at Legend of Dragoon, the beginning of the second disc explains the Dragoon Wars, which is the backstory to the plot of the game. This battle takes place well before our characters are ever brought into the fray, so it only makes sense to have that cinematic moment here, since it's backstory that our characters are already listening to. It matches the gameplay happening at that moment. Or take a look at the Soul series. The few times there ever is one, it's done very particularly at moments to embrace atmosphere. Are they still necessary? 
No. But they're so uninvasive, and they don't happen in incredibly crucial moments that you feel like you could have interacted with. Take Maiden Astraea from Demon Souls. The dialogue between her and Garl Vinland could have just as easily been a cutscene where they narrate their thoughts or why everything is the way it is. Instead, all of this happens during the boss battle itself. After the battle with Garl Vinland, Maiden Astraea even ends up taking her own life, despite her only ever intending to help all of those around her. It's one of the most emotionally challenging moments I've ever experienced in a video game, actually. And that is the key word of this whole video, experience. The real problem I have with so many cutscenes is that you just don't get to truly experience what's going on. Instead, the cutscenes tell you how to feel. They tell you the hardship, they show you the emotional highs and lows. You get to see the emotional impacts, and you probably do feel them as a player a bit as well. But you don't experience it the same way that you would if you had full control the whole time. Books, music, movies, and all other art forms, they let you feel everything as you consume them. But video games are the only medium that allow you to truly live through every step of the experience. Games have a power that no other art form has ever had. That power shouldn't be pushed to the side as it so often is. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I don't hate cutscenes, but if they're almost as prevalent as the gameplay itself, then there's a serious problem. They need to be used incredibly sparingly at moments where they would matter most. They need to be a last resort due to technical limitations or as a gameplay mechanic themselves, but they shouldn't be the go-to transition as they currently are. They should be the exception, not the rule. Now the cool thing though is that video gaming is still so young and I can't wait to see what direction it's going to take in the future or what innovations are going to be made in the coming years. Now some of you may totally disagree with me in this video. That's totally cool. I'm just a guy who loves talking about gaming and I want them to be the best they can possibly be. If you do have a discussion or have any opinions, please feel free to post it in the comments below. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.